Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode. Just wanted to show you uh, some information real quick. I know that everybody's aware of August 1. Probably seen it many times on YouTube. And the infamous or the famous BIP 148 proposal. And I want to share with you my favorite client that is BIP 148 compliant that is ready for this change. So the question is pretty much everybody's having is, you know, I'm gonna, am I going to lose my Bitcoin? Are, are they safe? And overall, there are changes coming along. Now, definitely, without a doubt, it's part of Bitcoin Core is that BIP 148 is going to be activated August 1st. We know that's probably one thing that you've heard a lot of. And these things are going to be volatile to the market. And one of the things that we should really look at is making sure that wherever we store our coins, that they are BIP 148 compliant, or at least on that soft fork chain. The reason that I recommend that, and you know, there's a debate between legacy, and there's also Bitmains doing their own potential forking. There might be a hard fork with, with SegWit 2x, but there's some consensus that the miners have to build. It's very complex, but overall, if you are running a full node or part of a node running BIP 148, you are backwards compatible, so that way your transactions are still valid. If you're on legacy and ultimately BIP 148, that soft fork chain wins the race, then the transactions that occurred during that time frame are pretty much invalidated. Now, overall, what BIP 148 does is activate SegWit, which was included in BIP 141. But really what we're doing here is we're saying that we're not going to have a digital signature included into a transaction ID. And the transactions are you know where you send Bitcoin. So there's inputs and outputs. And this is one way that gives us power to the people. So what we're saying is that as a user, if I'm doing a full node wallet from Bitcoin Core, or I'm using Electrium, which I'm going to show you in a moment, and I am part of a soft forked um, user activated soft fork BIP 148, then I'm not going to accept any legacy coin transactions. And that means that I'm pushing back on any miner that I'm using or that they're not using that code. It's a way of almost like saying, all right, as a user, I want to use Visa. And that's because American Express charges me too much for instance, as a user, and I go to a store and all they accept is American Express, then I'll say, no way. I'll go to another miner or another store that accepts my transactional fees or my transactional methodology, which is, in this example, Visa. There's a lot of great videos out there that might help you on this, but overall, it is something that may uh, lose consensus if we don't reach of over 13% in November 15th. So there's going to be a lot of unknown and uncertainty from August 1st, potentially up to November 15th, unless consensus is made ahead of time. Very huge topic. So what, uh, what are some of the things that we can do proactively to help out? First of all, have your own wallet and back it up. And backing up the private keys, you can export them. You can also, you know, have the wallet file if that your wallet does support that. You could save that off. There are ways that you can print up potentially your private keys. Just as long as you own your private keys, you are the one in control. If you put money on Coinbase, they own those keys. Those are custodian wallets. I recommend keeping those. Uh, maybe if you want dollars there for transactions, go right ahead. But long term, they should be in cold storage storage or software-based storage that is supports BIP 148. And always keep them off exchanges unless you want to do some trading. And there's play that potentially you could do that if an exchange will do a split, a one-to-one -one split where you have legacy and BIP 148 coins, you could immediately sell all your legacy coins and keep them dollars until one shakes out and then you bring that money back. You could potentially profit off of that. I, I'm i not gonna do that. Um, I was almost debating even talking about that, but you know what? I think you should know. Um, another way is to run your own Bitcoin Core user activated software for BIP 148 compliant. That's gonna take days, if not weeks, to download the entire chain because you are becoming a node, you are validating. I'm leveraging Electrum and pointing to a compliant server 
that's what I'm electing for the coins that I want to keep uh, protected. You know, another thing you could do too is is not do anything. You could take a uh, Bitcoin vacation because if you have coins that are in legacy right now and you don't receive or send any coins at that time, you're not transacting in any one of those chains. So we haven't forked yet. You are pre-fork because this is not a hard fork. It's not invalidating what you had in the past, not one bit. So since it's a soft fork, you can just do nothing Keep them in cold storage or, you know, if you have a paper wallet, you could do that. Wait until everything shakes out and then you're good. Um, another thing that you can do too is that you can transfer into Litecoin or, you know, another cryptocurrency. I think that's probably one of the reasons why Ethereum popped up today is that people are uncertain. So let's shift it over. Uh, let's show you Electrum Wallet. So first, if you go to electrum, electrum.org and go to downloads, the available download utility is right there ready for download and install. And uh, here we can just say, we'll do the Windows installer. It'll download this right here. And then what you do is just run the install just like anything before. Pick your default location and install. It's simple as that. Now, I already have created a wallet ahead of time, so I'm going to go, and since I've password protected it, I'm going to put in my password here. Now, I used to use multi-factor authentication with Electrum, and I uh, was using, uh, if I recall, TruePoint, and I had some major problems where um, I couldn't get into my wallet anymore, and I had to revert back to my backup, which is so important to have a backup that includes your private keys. And I was able to get my funds back, but... Um, I kind of gave up on the multi-factor authentication here on Electrum. So now we have it open. You can see that if I go to the console here, I am currently connecting uh, to a UASF uh, Segwit BIP148 uh, server. And in order to do that, you go into Tools and you go into Network. And if you specify one of your choice, so I chose 158. Dot one six nine dot one oh two dot one fourteen using fifty thousand oh two and then you can actually connect uh, to that and here we go we're connecting directly to uh, that full node and what I'm gonna do here is going to do some Genesis mining upgrade okay so I'm gonna go to my Genesis mining and we'll go ahead and select a user here we go we'll do your account here as Effie we don't want to do Bitcoin right now we want to do X11 and I normally like to do Dash and Litecoin because the transaction fees are lower hopefully that's what the segue to do for us validate perfect here we go alright so now that we have our funded I Item here. So I'm going to bring up Electrum. I'll do a send, put in the address. You can actually give or reduce the amount of transaction fees for a lower block confirmation, basically to get it there faster. Uh, we need to have 0.014 Bitcoin. Go ahead and send that. Validate. Payment is sent. There it is. 1019. Worked great. Of course, if you do use my promo code, uh, 3% of checkout, you get that instantly. You add a comment, um, also the time, and how much, so that way I verify that. I usually just put the copy, the time stamp, the date in, in there. Overall, I'll give you 4% because of your generous uh, use of my code. I've been able to upgrade into my uh, affiliate ranking so that I do get a little bit more back now. And until next time, bye.